Welcome to another season of Hoda's Career Info, the program where career professionals from across the globe meet to empower you to succeed. This program is brought to you by Right Career Fit. Listen and learn, and remember to have that very important career conversation with a career professional. Professionals, I think um, that empowerment piece is very critical. Um, and uh, we can't do the work for our clients, but we can empower them. You know, it's not always about the salary for your first job. It's a journey <laughs> and enjoy it, right? There are going to be ups, there are going to be downs. You know, but staying resilient is um, is very critical. Thank you for joining me in Hodes Career Info, your career program where guests from across the globe share career tips and personal stories to help you successfully navigate your career. I am Hoda, your host. I look forward to another season of career chats with international professionals who will inspire you to take your journey to the next level. My guest today is Sangeeta Mehta. Sangeeta holds an economics degree from Brock University in two postgraduate certifications in human resources management and career development. She is currently the manager, partnership development and career coach for the ADAPT program under the Toronto Metropolitan University. Prior to joining ADAPT, Sangeeta spent 15 years in human resources, working for entrepreneurial to large organizations in the areas of recruitment, employee development, and HR strategy. Sangeeta's mission is to provide career coaching to post-secondary graduates and to empower them with the requisite skills to succeed in today's labor market. Sangeeta is passionate about coaching her students, preparing them to be job ready, and helping them transition to meaningful employment. In her spare time, Sangeeta loves to read, work out, and cycle with her family. Stay tuned till the end to learn about the career program for youth and to hear the amazing job search secrets from Sangeeta. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts and feedback on my chat with Sangeeta. Welcome, Sangeeta Meta to Hodes Kirir Info. I'm so happy and so excited to have you a part of this program and hear insights about your experience in the career development field. Sangeeta, I always start uh, with a challenge for my guests, asking them to choose one career term that reflects the work they do and ask for a definition of it, not that the one that I would find in a dictionary or uh, if I do a Google search, but your de you know, definition from your personal experience. Uh, so thank you, uh, Hoda, for inviting me today um, as part of this important discussion. Um, I love the work that you've done over the years with your YouTube channel. Um, it's a great place where anyone can come and find some great value regarding their own career journey. Uh, so to go back to go back and answer your question, actually, my my word would be um, it is a little simplistic. It it is actually career development, <laughs> and um, I, I know it's a term that we all use, but given the work that I do, um, it is essentially what I teach. Um, so just to go back a little bit, um, I do work for uh, ADAPT, Advanced Digital and Professional Training. Um, this is a skills development and a work placement program for recent graduates. Uh, so we bridge that employment gap by equipping um, our adapters with 70 hours uh, of in-demand uh, digital and professional skills. 
Um, this program is a micro credential um, as they receive a badge and certification. And uh, it also opens up career paths, alternative career paths. Um, and then one, one story I love to share is that uh, we had a participant um, who was in her final year of human resources. So she was studying human resources and she, she thought, you know what, I'm gonna enroll and adapt and just see where things go. So one of our workshops, uh, one of our mandatory workshops is introduction to coding. Anyways, it turned out that she had a knack. She loved it. Um, and she then further decided to, to do some, you know, continuous learning, some more micro credentials. And today she's a front end developer. And she also okay. teaches young kids um, how to code. So I just, I just love sharing that story. It just demonstrates the, you know, the opportunities of these alter alternative career paths. Um, so I do teach young graduates across Canada the fundamentals in career development. Um, so there's, there's so many pieces that are involved. Um, but if I had to chunk it down, you know, it is the labor market, you know, researching the labor market, you know, creating targeted resumes and, and cover letters, interviewing skills, navigating the hidden market, like with tools like networking and maximizing your LinkedIn profile. Um, and of course, there's so much in between that, you know, that is discussed like values and interests and assessments and strengths and etc. Um, but as career professionals, I think um, that empowerment piece is very critical. Um, and uh, we can't do the work for our clients, but we can empower them um, and give them the tools and techniques today. And over time, um, this is something that they can hone in on and get better. Um, and as you know, it's a skill that over time needs to be practiced um, in order to get better. Uh, so most of my, my participants are empowered through the workshop and uh, they know what they need to do in this labor market. Um, thank you for taking on the challenge. Everybody tells me that it got them thinking about their work and I'm glad that it helps that, but it also helps the people listening uh, to understand what we do. And you sharing that story is a great example of empowerment, right? Empowering that young lady to find a path that she probably didn't even think uh, can be a career pathway for her. Uh, so I appreciate you taking this on. Thank you, Ta. My next question to you is about a personal story. I always, again, a personal story that you would like to talk about that you can send a message perhaps by being uh, on this program to other people uh, going through career exploration or trying to find uh, an opportunity uh, in the job market? Yeah, I, I actually love this question. Um, you know, it, it's so important to hear people's stories because it really demonstrates how interests change over time and how people adapt and change as well. So I really appreciate hearing stories where the trajectories are curved, <laughs> not a linear, um, not a linear line. So, um, so this is a story that I actually share with my adapt participants. It's part of my workshop. Um, and, and my story is one that comes full circle, I believe. Um, so I've spent about 15 years in human resources, you know, working for large companies, uh, small startups, um, but the recruitment function was always part of my portfolio. So I really uh, had a good handle on, you know, how companies recruit and, you know, what they look for. Um, and I'm just going to end it there and then come back to that. And then over time, um, you know, my motivating factors change and, and so did my experiences. And then I was faced with that question, is, is HR going to really take me to retirement? Because I didn't, I, I found that the passion wasn't once, like when I was, when I just graduated, that passion was very, fierce and um, you know it just wasn't there so you know I, I was at a crossroad um, and with exploration informational interviews um, I decided to go back to school and obtain my career development practitioner certification and um, and, and you know it's, it's interesting because um, I, I don't I don't share this part of the story but I will share it here and um, you know, when I was going through that whole journey um, and the week after I made the decision to go back to school, 
I, I don't know. So I, I don't know what possessed me to go in the basement, but I, I was uh, looking, I don't even know what I was looking for, but I came across this, this career exploration binder. So at one point I was actually laid off from uh, one of the companies that I was working um, at and they sent us to an outplacement um, service. And Hoda, I don't even remember going. I don't remember any of the exercises. I, it's like, you know, when you, when you get laid off, sometimes you take it personally and it, it's, it's, it's really hard. And this is, you know, when I talk to clients today who have gone through that process, I can relate. Um, anyways, there was a binder. And in the binder, there was a big flip chart um, with all the all the possibilities where I could potentially uh, really the, the really good careers that I should, you know, I should pursue. Anyways, the number one, <laughs> the number one position was a career counselor or a career coach. And so if I had any doubts in my mind at that point, that solidified my decision. Uh, so anyways, it, it was just just a beautiful story because I just, uh, you know, for me, it was like, wow, I didn't even know I could have done this like 10 years ago, but but I'm here now. Anyway, so going back, I, you know, after my, my exploration, I went, went back to school and obtained my career development practitioners uh, certification. And then when I when I read the job posting where I where I'm working right now, I was like, wow. I think this this job posting was written for me because it married a lot of my old HR skills and brought in my new my career counseling skills. Um, and I want to be also in a in a position where I was impacting young graduates, uh, young young people. Um, and this this program allows me to do that. And today I'm able to give back all my intel that I have learned in all of those companies uh, that I used to recruit for. So everything that I've learned in HR, I'm now able to share with my DAP participants. And this is where it's come to complete full circle for me. Um, yeah, so, you know, I conducted a lot of uh, informational interviews before deciding I wanted to be in the post-secondary space. Um, but the other piece to all of this is, and this is something that I, I I make sure my participants really hear is, you know, the first 10 years of me um, working was just, you know, going online, finding opportunities and being, you know, successful. That was I, essentially my job search strategy. It's the last 10 years that none of my positions were posted. Right. Every single position that I found was me networking, uh, me, you know, navigating that hidden market, but using that referral process and and doing those informational interviews. Um, and, and it is that, you know, navigating that hidden job market. And it is so critical that, um, you know, as a young, uh, you know, somebody who is very young, that they have that networking piece as part of their job search strategy. I love your story, and I want to thank you for sharing that little uh, career exploration folder that you found, because I, uh, I really favor having a career portfolio and saying revisit it every month. So having it revisited it a few years later, you kind of saw what was in there, and it pushed you uh, to in a certain direction, to explore a certain direction. We definitely encourage exploration, like you said, not just um, right away you're going to find the right job. And networking is such an important piece of um, job seeking. So I'm glad you mentioned these two messages within your personal experience. But my next uh, question is really about students because you and I share that passion of supporting students to success. Uh, so from your experiences currently at ADAPT and your uh, thoughts as you support the students, uh, what, are going, what is going through the minds of youth today as they explore career opportunities? Yeah, and, and, you know, thank you for this question, because I see it, um, you know, every day and, you know, it, it, it's about, um, it's about the opportunity, right, really um, reading that job posting and really understanding, you know, what are the skills, what are the experiences that I'm going to walk away with, you know, and, and I always tell you know, the, the young, um, the young people that, you know, it's not always about the salary for your first job. You know, I know sometimes, you know, you've got this expectation in your head. I would rather you really look at that job posting, really read it. And in your research, you know, because, you know, given any company 
there is so much opportunity within, right? So, you know, this might be the, might be a really good opportunity, but you have to see the holistic, you have to see the big, the big picture. Um, so really taking that, um, that approach and deciding, yeah, is this the right opportunity for me, even though maybe the salary might not be there, but you know, down the road, it will help your resume, right? It will, you, you gotta understand how can you leverage this um, that it will down the road help you in the longer run right so that that's one thing just open to the opportunities right so you know so don't don't always get hung up about the salary is, is number one. Um, I said it again I say it again. <laughs> uh, you know, I know, you know when when, when new graduates come to, into our program all they're doing is applying online and you know and i'm like if you continue to do that you're going to be doing this forever you know and um you know as i said you have to have a more, more holistic approach to this you know if you're not doing that networking you got to do those informational interviews got to do those copy chats it, it it becomes so relevant and i love when the light bulb the light bulb actually clicks because you know i've got the, my participants coming back Oh, I wish I listened to you from day one because I am now out there and doing what you you told me to do, and I found this opportunity because I had you know a career chat or a coffee sorry coffee chat sorry with somebody or an informational interview with somebody and um, but it's okay they come, eventually get there, and 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 the funny thing is you know because we have employers who come and speak to um, our participants as well, but you know. If I say something in my workshop and the employer says something exactly, you know, all of a sudden it's golden, but it's okay. They're getting the message in a couple of different ways. Uh, but it's it's just it's just hilarious how, you know, as soon as an employer says it, it's like, oh, I have to listen, right? But uh, but but so I see that. And then, you know, the third thing I just want to say is um, you know, it's a journey <laughs> and enjoy it, right? There are gonna be ups, there are gonna be downs. You know, but staying resilient is um, is very critical, right? So, when you don't get that opportunity that you thought you were like 100% going to get, um, you know, make sure that you're doing things that, you know, you are you are rejuvenating and re-energizing um, when you when you are hit with some some adversity. I appreciate how you embedded your advice within the experiences. Uh for uh, students to think about. And yes, these are three key points uh, that uh, students need to keep in mind. And uh, network, network is, <laughs> is probably the message we need to push. What would you do with students who are too shy to go out and network? How would you, uh, you know, get them going? Yeah, you know, I, and I know not everyone's going to be an extrovert, right? And, and I talk about this in, in my workshop. You know, I know, I know some of you are introverts. I, I, I get that. You know, and, and I think the biggest thing there is um, having realistic, uh, chunkable goals, right? So, you know, and then I say, you know, if you if you are going to a career event or if you're going to any kind of event, you know, don't go to that that um, group that's you know that's ten people, right? Like, because it's probably you're going to be intimidated, right? So, maybe you go in and you you have a goal of talking to maybe two people, and that's it. I think you know I think that is a win right and i and i and it's something that you need to celebrate because i know it is really hard for you but as you continue you do get a little bit more confident because of the practice and then you know your your goals you know maybe the next time it's five maybe next time it's you know maybe you do go to that group right of of, of ten but you have to be realistic to yourself and really understand you know what is it that you can take on? But at the same time, you know, knowing that going to this event just took out all of your energy, right? So as soon as the event, you know, is done, what are you going to do for yourself to to re-energize, right? So making sure you 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 really have a you know a clear process in, in place. I, I love this, that, you know, reward yourself kind of after the fact <laughs> attitude is, I think it will work. Yes, I know as an introvert, uh, you know, starting out to network when I first came to Canada, it was a bit tough. And so I'm always asking other people ideas, questions uh, about getting the introverts out there. 
Um, yeah, you know, but I totally to relate. Really <laughs> so, but I just want to say as well, like, you know, if you were to survey that room of of individuals, like, how many people actually would put their hand up and say, "I want to be here," and I love, I love networking, right? Like, I, I, I do think that you know, a lot of us are forced. Um, it is part of our jobs. It's, it is part of um, you just it's just part of success, right? And and as as you evolve as an individual, you just get better because you just practice the skill. And I think that's what people have to see. Like there are some people who love networking and who can totally go from one room to the to the other side of the room and collect you know fifty cards and and, and all of that. Um, and and that's wonderful. And, but, you know, I, I do think that, you know, just practicing the skill over time, people just become better. Do you love it? Maybe. Do you not? You know, there, there is that whole whole piece and, and it just comes down to, you know, I guess you as an individual. Absolutely. And some people, like you said, are born with a skill, but some of us have to work hard on it. And uh, but it is a skill that can be developed. It doesn't mean that we're going to be comfortable, but it can be developed. I agree. Um, my final question to you, Sangeeta, and it builds on that, is uh, that we always tell our students to always uh, develop, you know, take on new experiences or embrace new challenges. What challenges do you have going on that you would like to share? Yeah, and I, you know, I think, you know, as we come out of the, the pandemic, you know, the, the conversation of mental health has become more prevalent. Um, but as career pr uh, practitioners, sometimes we are faced with clients who are who are suffering, um, and by and, and by no means are we professionals um, in this space. But I do believe that if we can augment our skills and with some some training in this field, um, we would be able to maybe uh, understand and hopefully support them a little bit better. Uh, so for me, I am actually looking into some positive psychology um, and then learning more around building that resiliency because over time I've seen um, my adapt participants struggle with this and you know if I can support them in a more positive way, uh, I definitely you know want to do that. <laughs> There's definitely a need for this, and we hear it everywhere we go. To, um, I guess we don't know if it's really post-pandemic right now. We keep hearing different stories, right? But uh, definitely being involved and understanding the uh, mental health process is definitely uh, an asset in our profession. So thank you, Sangeeta. These were all the questions I have prepared for you today. Is there anything you would like to add or wrap up uh, before we close? Yeah, so, you know, so first of all, thank you for providing a channel uh, where all types of people can learn about uh, career literacy. Um, I believe this dialogue has become more prevalent because of the pandemic. Um, there's been a, a shift or a growth among career changers. Um, but I've also seen this in young people as well, where they're not, they don't know what they want to do once they graduate. So our work as uh, career practitioners um, become more critical today. Um, and with that, I just want to say, you know, continuous learning, uh, micro-credentialing, professional development becomes very important. Um, I do believe we, we will see more of this. And I've seen a shift with employers too, um, you know, really open to people learning the skills on their own and then being able to demonstrate this in their portfolio. So in my line of work and you know what I do, I, I, I've seen some uh, employment partners hire based on, on this expectation, uh, on this. So, so the expectations have been changing over time. So I, I just think uh, it's, it's, really, it's really awesome to see that that, uh, that mind shift change has uh, been happening. So. So yeah, that's all, I, that's all I want to say. I just want to say thank you so much for having me be part of your show. Thank you, Sangeeta. I always enjoy our conversation and I feel I can talk to you forever because uh, we both have the success of youth today at heart. Uh, thank you so much for being part of Hoda City at Info. Thank you. <laughs>
My guest today on Hoda's Career Info is Sangeeta Mehta, a career professional whose focus, as you heard, is to support young people to succeed. You can connect with Sangeeta on LinkedIn. Please remember that you can listen to Hoda's Career Info since it's also dropped as a podcast. To let me know if you are interested in an opportunity to talk about your work, you can send me a direct message on my website, writecareerfit.com, where you can also sign up for my newsletter to stay up to date on the latest episodes. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and follow me on social media for more career info. I am your host, Hoda, and until next time, stay inspired and keep moving forward in constructive ways. Thank you.